All right, so today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I don't have a really good camera setup, but I'm going to give this a shot. It's my first tutorial. So today I'm actually going to paint a Volkite cannon for a Night Strix. And I'm going to do it with a bunch of Forge World paints. So we've got some Calif Blue, Eidolon Purple, Angron Red, Power Class Origin, Sigismund Yellow. And I'm going to layer these up along the edge of the gun in order to show you guys how to do um, a nice scoring effect from the heat. And this is actually the same tutorial that is in the Horace Heresley Masterclass book. I have not used any, despite how they look, I have not used any of the airbrush paints before. So we're going to give this a shot and see if it's as good as what I normally do. Alright, so here I start with the Kalth Blue. And one thing to remember when you start out with a new paint, especially one you've never used before in the airbrush, See what I'm doing? I'm just make sure you spray a little bit on a surface so you know how it comes out. Now with this, I actually had to redo it because it's a really thick, wet paint. So I had to learn to go really slowly and light layers and make sure that you hit all the cracks. Make sure that you get in all the little grooves, especially on the front of a gun like this. Uh, with anything that has those ridges and bumps, uh, most of the time you do not see when you're missing a side. Especially on nights, it's all angular parts. So just double check and make sure you hit every side. Then from that Kalth Blue, we're going to go on to Eidolon Purple. Just make sure between layers you let everything dry. Otherwise, it won't... It's, it's almost like adding extra, extra layers of paint. If you don't let the previous layer dry, when you do the next layer, it makes it so much harder, and especially with an airbrush, you get those streaks uh, as the air pushes the previous layer of paint. So make sure to give it plenty of time to dry. Now I'm going right onto the edge where the metal is showing, and you can see just, just gently, because it will cover over a little bit of the blue on the blue side. And with the finished work, I actually made it quite a lot larger than what's in the Forge World book, but it turned out really nice. I figured the guns just fired ten times more than what was fired in the Forge World book. But I didn't end up painting the rest of the gun either, because uh, I knew that majority of the stuff would be, get covered up, so I just started with that nice dark bulk of metal layer. So from that we're going to go on to the Angron Red. Yep. It's a nice mid-tone for these because there are five different colors going from the blue to the yellow. It's provided a really nice balance to everything and a smooth transition. Now this one, this one tended to pop a little more than the others, so I had to be even more careful with it. Uh, and that, the nice thing is, as a bigger layer, it does transition more from the other colors on either, either side from the yellow on the far side to the blue on the other side. So you could actually spray a little more, and it's okay if you cover between the layers. If you go between the purple, see, it's it covered quite a lot of that purple. But that's okay, because it's in turn gonna get covered a lot by the next layer, which is the Pyroclast Orange. Now, same thing, just really nice layers, make sure it comes out right, especially if you're, you run out of it and then you pour immediately from the next pot. Make sure that you don't have any of that previous color left over. And now, it's not as important here because we're actually blending. Um, so if it's a little different, then oh, it's okay, it's going to blend anyway. But you don't want to start spraying a new color and have it be 90% the old color that you just used. Yep. See, now we're starting to see that really nice heat scoring effect. And for the final layer, we're going to go into the Sigismund Yellow. Now, they do sell all these Forge World paints as a set. Totally recommend it. It's great stuff. I've not seen any clear paints. I know Minotaur makes some clear ones. Uh, but, yeah, you can see that yellow just really rounded out. I know Minotaur makes some clear paints, but... They're ghost tints, which are nice, and I'll do a tutorial on those too. But these, just look at that color. It's just so awesome. Okay, and as a final effect, I wanted to just show off the night in person. You can see how well it blends in 
with the rest of the night. And another quick tip that I want to show you, and I'm going to put a link in the description for where I got mine. I actually use these little airbrush bottles. Now, the problem with the forge roll paints is that when it's in a bottle like this, it's really hard to pour into the cup of your airbrush. So you end up wasting a ton of the paint. But one of these Vallejo air bottles, just an empty one, is the almost big enough, or is actually a little bit bigger than the amount of paint you get in one of these. So just dump it from here to here, and then that dripper bottle will give you a ton more control over what you're actually pouring in your airbrush. Okay, I'm going to go through another quick little look at the night. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll certainly answer them as quickly as I can. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.